was born in a little unconventional village in North Wales called Tulacra. Totally different world to what we have today, but uh, no complaints. I don't ever to feel deprived. It was just different after the war, but it was still a wonderful place to, to grow up. The railway was the, the dividing line between two communities. On the northern side was the English-speaking, more adventurous boys who'd come from Liverpool after the war or during the war. On the south side of the railway was more of the Welsh-speaking, chapel-going, mining and farming communities where Welsh was the predominant language. So uh, I didn't start speaking fluent English until I was about five or six when I went to school. And I found the, the boys on the other side of the railway far more exciting and adventurous. And so it was, it was two different worlds. We had miles of sandy beaches where everyone became whatever we wanted to be. The beaches of Arizona, Custer's Last Stand, the Roman legions, even modern day war games. So it was an exciting place to grow up. Albeit there was barbed wire in places and the odd knock-on pillboxes, which were used as dens. But from a child's point of view, it was bliss. When people look at Tulacra Warren today, they probably can't believe what it was like during the war and shortly afterwards. The whole area, the three-mile area, was dotted with literally hundreds of shacks, caravans, old railway carriages, old buses, all permanent homes for varied groups of people, mostly evacuees from the, the northwest, particularly from the bombed out areas of Liverpool. And so it became a vibrant community, slightly isolated from the rest of, of Wales, really. We all had little jobs. Even in them days, it was a holiday resort. And we used to go and meet the people from the train. The station was open in Tulacra in those days. And we'd wait with great anticipation as the train pulled in and all the families tumbled out and we became acutely aware of all the different accents. Every week or every month the accents changed because in those days the various communities and the factories in the northwest had different weeks for their holidays. And I always remember the first ones were the ones from the potteries. Those accents always heralded our lucrative summer season of, of carrying luggage. Religion was probably more important than we were aware at the time. And being as there was no uh, Methodist chapel in Talacra, they decided that they should form one, all the community did. The wonderful part about the chapel as well, it was actually bilingual, but it was mostly English because it was catering for the people who moved to Talacra and the people who were in Talacra. It was never a problem between the English and the Welsh. It was a joint effort. They actually purloined one of the old prisoner of war camp huts from Penafor and they brought it down to Tulacra. My father helped it with his tractor and trailer. And they collected money by bringing the choir from Fun and Groyne after, the, after chapel to sing on the beach. And eventually they collected enough to form this beautiful little mission chapel. And it was opened by all the local community. So that was very much indicative of the way people thought in those days. Whether it was building for a chapel or organising a carnival, community always pulled together and it felt it was a strong community spirit. It was a lovely time to be brought up.